Thank you, Madam President. I promise this is my last carry today. Um, but I, I do want to talk um, a little bit about the bill that's before you that requires Holocaust and genocide education be taught in Oregon. It comes from the Senate Education Committee on a vote with no opposition. Um, you heard a little bit about the inspiration behind the concept, but I would like to spend a little bit of time talking about what the bill actually does and why I believe it's important for Oregon. As folks may or may not know, the reason I initially ran for my local school board was to work with our community to address issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion in response to incidents of racism and anti-Semitism that were springing up in our schools. We had swastikas that were being painted on junior high walls. We had posters that students had lacquered into the gymnasium that had Jews being pushed into ovens. Just blocks from me at the synagogue near my, my house, there were anti-Semitic posters going up last year. And just this last month, there was a Jewish student who was targeted with an anti-Semitic note in her textbook. And we know that we are losing our history. The greatest generation of Americans, as they have been called, the 16 million individuals who fought from the United States in World War II, our veterans, with direct memory of that era, less than 5% are with us today. And as we lose that lived history, we also know that the data tells us that we actually have a ch have, we're in danger of losing the stories and actually losing the education that's embedded in those stories. Millennials are now twice as likely from a generation ago to not be able to identify the Holocaust or any other genocidal act. Over a fifth of students who are graduating from high schools right now can't identify the word. And states, in response, are stepping up. In wide bipartisan support across the country, over 10 states now require Holocaust and genocide education as a part of their academic content or their curriculum. Now, a little bit about Senate Bill 664. There's no emergency clause. And what the bill would do is require districts to begin the process of incorporating Holocaust and genocide education beginning in 2021, 2020 and 2021, and it provides ramp up time over several years to be able to adopt this into academic content standards so that at the next round of curriculum adoption, schools would be able to make sure that this subject matter is included. I was asked by someone recently, well, aren't schools already doing this? And I would say anecdotally, yes, most are to the degree that I know, but we honestly don't know. I would also say that the bill is not just limited to the Holocaust from the mid 20th century. Humanities in humanity aren't, isn't just limited to the curriculum of the 1940s. Although the scale of that atrocity is something that the world has never seen and hopefully will never see again, Genocide didn't start in that era, and it didn't end there as well. We know from Cambodia and Kosovo and Rwanda, and even a couple years ago in the Middle East with ISIS, it was systematically targeting Christian populations. So it's the concepts that are inherent. It starts with othering of people, to bullying, to hate speech, to hate activity, to violence, and ultimately to atrocity. The bill itself allows for flexibility. It's in the living idea behind the curriculum so that it's not just tucked away in a paragraph somewhere in a world history course. And it would also allow districts to teach age-appropriate material. I think a real component is also just in the partnerships that we'd be able to develop through the legislation. I reached out to the Oregon Jewish Museum and Center for Holocaust Education about the importance of education, had the opportunity to sit down and meet with a room full of first and second generation Holocaust survivors like Les and Ava Eigner, my constituents, who hope that their stories stay alive. I also want to say that I trust teachers. We're not interested in writing a, a set of curriculum. Again, not a paragraph lost in a textbook, but teachers partnering with community organizations to provide rich, an age-appropriate curriculum. Madam President, may I, as part of my close, can I read from some written material? Okay. 
This is from Amanda Solomon, who is the manager of the Museum of Holocaust Education. This is her testimony that she gave in committee. Rather than simply studying facts and learning about the history of the Holocaust, Senate Bill 664 has the opportunity to be structured to provide students active opportunities to engage in critical thinking skills. A strong curriculum might look at Oregon's history of discrimination and utilize tools such as the learned scapegoating and intimidation, appropriation, segregation, exclusion, dehumanization, all of which are used together in genocide. Students can examine the origin, the intention, the motivation of why these tools are being used rather than focusing on comparing how they are being implemented. Students can also be exposed to the numerous ways individuals and groups have resisted oppression and discrimination, tools of resistance, persistence, creation, celebration, organization reform, are equally important and provide a platform to teach students tangible skills to combat everyday injustice. Senate Bill 664 aligns with our current social studies academic content standards and the values of learning in public education in Oregon. I'd be happy to answer any questions and I urge your I support.